Hi, welcome to PKS classes. Today we will study the anti-inflammatory drugs. In the previous class we have studied inflammation and anti-inflammatory drugs act against the inflammation. Anti-inflammatory drugs can be of two types, steroidal and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs means they have the steroid nucleus and they are known as the glucocorticoids or corticosteroids like prednisolone, dexamethasone, they are hydrocortisone, they are all steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they, they are the, the common uh, painkillers uh, used, analgesics used, antipyretics used like your paracetamol, ibuprofen, diclofenac, uh, naproxen, pyroxicam, indomethacin, aspirin, all these are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs uh, act by inhibiting the prostaglandin synthesis and prostaglandin uh, has a role in three three things one is they sensitize the nociceptors the pain receptors they uh, increase the body temperature and they uh, stimulate the inflammatory mediators and they are causing edema okay so the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs in addition to the, their anti-inflammatory action also shows analgesic action and antipyretic action. Let us uh, uh, discuss the mechanism. Uh, as we have already studied before that phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate present in, on the cell membrane when acts, uh, uh, the, uh, the enzyme acts in phospholipase A2 on PIP2 there will be production of arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid follows two pathways, the cyclooxygenase pathway and the lipoxygenase pathway. The cyclooxygenase pathway are commonly called as the COX pathway. And uh, this COX pathway, this COX is of two types, COX1 and COX2. And this COX1 is constitutive, constitutive means it is always present and COX2 is inducible. It is induced during inflammation, during any injury, it is induced, whereas COX-1 is always present. And because of the, this action, there is production of cyclic endoperoxides like prostaglandin G2 and H2. Then there is the action of two enzymes, prostaglandin synthase and thromboxane synthase. Prostaglandin synthase produces prostaglandins, thromboxane pro synthase produces thromboxane. So prostaglandin can be prostaglandin D2, E2, I2, F2 alpha. These prostaglandins, they have many actions and mainly as far as this inflammation and pain and body temperature is concerned, these prostaglandins mainly D2 and E2, they sensitize the pain receptors, nociceptors, the pain receptors, they are sensitized and they uh, produce the inflammatory mediators and uh, cause edema and the accumulation of fluid, swelling, inflammation and they also increase the body temperature by um, stimulating the uh, temperature regulatory center. So, these prostaglandins simultaneously uh, uh, produce three things, algesia, pain, inflammation and hyperpyrexia. So if we inhibit this COX cyclooxygenase, then we can inhibit the production of prostaglandins. From these prostaglandins, prostaglandin D2 and I2, they also cause platelet, they inhibit rather, they inhibit platelet aggregation. And thromboxin a2 causes platelet aggregation and if the COX inhibitor should be used the, uh, the net balance between this this is causing platelet aggregation this is inhibiting platelet aggregation and the COX inhibitor's net action is inhibition of platelet aggregation so it can be a side effect and uh, we can also use it medicinally like aspirin Aspirin, aspirin uh, is used as antiplatelet for cardiovascular uh, problems. It is used as antiplatelet at 75 mg, the smaller dose. 
it is used as antiplatelet because the net action is inhibition of platelet aggregation. So these are the uses, analgesic action, antiparietic action and anti-inflammatory action are the uses. So the side effect can be increase in bleeding time. If it is used for medicinal purpose then uh, only aspirin is used. For others we can say it is one of the side effect. Then we also know that this prostaglandin is a negative regulator of acid secretion in the parietal cells of GIT. The positive regulators are histamine, gastrin, acetylcholine. The negative regulator is prostaglandin which inhibits the acid secretion. So the COX inhibitors when we use, they, and they their uh, net action is the, the increase acid secretion. Prostaglandins inhibit acid secretion. So the COX inhibitors or uh, these NSID drugs, they increase acid secretion. So gastrointestinal irritation and peptic ulcer are the side effects of all these non steroidal anti drugs. So these non steroidal anti drugs can be classified as COX-1 selective. So the COX-1 selective drugs, the major drawback with these drugs is GI irritation, ulcer, peptic ulcer, increased bleeding time. Okay. And there is also renal toxicity because these, these prostaglandins are also vasodilators. Prostaglandins are also vasodilators. So by uh, inhibiting their production, they can uh, decrease the blood supply to kidney and can cause renal toxicity. But when we use COX-1 less selective. They, they have lesser side effect as compared to COX-1 selective and there are some drugs which are COX non-selective, they are equipotent uh, both on COX-1 and COX-2 and uh, uh, some of them like diclofenac are used as anti-inflammatory okay. and this paracetamol they are mainly used as antipyretic and uh, then when the drug is COX-2 selective Cox 2 selective, Selicoxib, Valdecoxib, Rofecoxib is uh, uh, just written from the market. So these Cox 2 selective, since they are inducible and induced during inflammation, these Cox 2 selective drugs are used as anti-inflammatory drugs and mainly used in chronic inflammation like uh, arthritis. We can use these Cox 2 selective inhibitors, but they have a major drawback of uh, cardiotoxicity and because of the cardiotoxicity rofecoxib is written for the market in addition to that they have renal toxicity they have hepatotoxicity so they their safety profile is less they are highly toxic drugs okay so this is all about your non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs they can be used as analgesic antiparietic and anti inflammatory but have associated with side effects. So they should not be used for long term. If they are used for long term, definitely in th there will be ulcer. Okay. Then about the steroidal anti-inflammatory st uh, drugs the, like glucocorticoids. These glucocorticoids stimulate lipocortin. They stimulate lipocortin which inhibits phospholipase A2. So that there will be no production of prostaglandins. In addition to that, these steroids means they act on the steroid receptor, steroid receptor which is present in the nucleus. So these corticosteroids they enter the cell by binding to a corticosteroid binding globulin. So by binding to a corticosteroid binding globulin, a protein they enter they enter the cell and enter the nucleus and where it is released and in the nucleus there is the nuclear receptor the steroid receptor to which it binds and it regulates the gene expression 
regulates the gene expression and inhibit so first thing this cox gene is suppressed so there will be suppression of cox gene and there is also suppression of genes related to inflammatory mediators inflammatory mediators like your cytokines chemokines like interleukins tumor necrosis factor alpha so all the cytokines uh, release is inhibited and there is suppression of cox gene because of the uh, action of corticosteroids on the nuclear receptor and in addition it also stimulates the release of lipocortin which inhibits this phospholipase k2 so this is all about anti-inflammatory drugs thank you